Welcome back to the Detroit Tigers franchise on MLB The Show 20. We've got some tough games coming up with the division rival Twins and the Yankees. Tough stretch for us. We'll see what we can do. Make sure you drop a like on this video. Subscribe if you're new to the channel and you want to see more MLB The Show 20 content. And we can build a winner together as we will start out here against the Twins. They are 12-7. and seven. We are 12-6. and six. Quite a surprising start so far for our Tigers. We didn't expect to be this good early on. Devin Smeltzer will be the pitcher on the mound for the Twins. Three starts, a 480 ERA. And Jonathan Scope is going to ground into a double play to get Smeltzer out of the inning. Now Spencer Turnbull will take the mound for us. Three starts for him, a 450 ERA. So these pitchers kind of close in talent right now so far this year. Nice strikeout there for Turnbull. He kind of gets a little bit of a favorable call, but that would be the second out of the inning. And then this one lifted into right center field. That one is going to go for a base hit. And then coming up is Miguel Sano, and he's going to get this one into the corner of right field. That might bring a man home. They're going to send him from third, and the throw is not going to be in time. So, Twins take the 1-0 lead. Now on a full count, it's Rosario with the grand salami. Hard first inning for Spencer Turnbull after he got the first two outs relatively easily. Rosario, his fourth homer of the year, a grand slam, and the Twins go up big early, 5-0. We go to the third now, and on a 3-2 count, down the left field line, and a little bit of trouble out there in left to pick it up, and another run going to come home for the Twins, 6-0, just a horrid start. For the Tigers, Scope again going to ground into a double play. So Scope really unclutched so far today. And it remains 6-0. Elvis Vizcaeno take, takes a nasty shot on his shin bone on that play. He would come out of the game. And there's a nice double play for us against the Twins. But they're up 7-0 right now as... They had runners in scoring position there, and now in the bottom of the sixth still, they're going to bring home that run that got left on third base, and it would be an 8-0 trouncing by the Minnesota Twins. So you can see not much good coming from us. Turnbull had an awful outing. The bullpen did okay. It was only six earned runs for Turnbull. So a couple of those coming in on error the next game we would win though seven to four and that one was pretty interesting as Chang will get the win there the bullpen is really what got it done in that game for us and then we would lose the rubber game six one they get it behind Kenta Maeda so now moving into the Yankees series we're now 13 and eight the Yankees come in at 16 and six so this one back at home at Comerica Park. We'll see what we can do against the New York Yankees. Our pitcher who has been the most surprising this season will be taking the mound. And that pitcher is Zach Godley. Four starts, only a 2.05 ERA. He has been absolutely amazing with a .84 whip. DJ LeMayhew going to get this one down the right field line. And that one into the corner. And LeMayhew, easy double for him, as that will be in the first inning. That sets up a runner in scoring position with two outs. And for some reason, we have some trouble with this, but we get Aaron Judge to ground out to second base and end the threat there. So James Paxton will be the pitcher for the Yankees. Four starts, a 6.53 ERA. He has not been very good this, this year so far. And with two outs, he gets Jonathan Scope window shopping. So he will go down, and we move all the way to the fifth inning until these pitchers start to get hit, as there you can see Godley giving it up down the left field line. Another lining down the left field line. These Yankees really using every corner of the ballpark here. Now over to shortstop, trying to get the double play to prevent the run, and we do. 
Beautiful end of the fifth inning right there. So now Godley up against LeMayhew in the top of the six, and LeMayhew, perfect gapper as that one out into right center field. And easy double for DJ LeMayhew, putting himself in scoring position with no outs. Now on third with one out. This one's deep out to center. It would be grabbed for the second out of the inning, but LeMayhew going to tag and score the first run of the ball game. So Yankees go up 1-0. Here's Aaron Judge, and he's able to hit a little bloop into right center field. And that is going to put runners on the corners with just one out. So we bring out Buck Farmer. Three games he has come in. 4.91 ERA. We're hoping he does better in this one. He gets a nice strikeout right there. And that will end the threat. So Farmer comes in, but the Yankees already up 2-0. And in the bottom of the ninth with two outs, it's C.J. Cron. He hits a solo jacker. A perfect line-out home run. His fifth homer of the year. And he cuts the lead in half. Unfortunately, just a solo shot. But it'll be 2-1. to one. So maybe some hope for a comeback here for the Tigers. But it's going to have to be a two-out rally. As we have two away. And in comes Miguel Cabrera. They're going to bring in Araldis Chapman. Who's pitched in 10 games this year with a 4.15 ERA. They are not going to play games. But look, Miggy. Going to get one into left field and put himself on first base. That is awesome. Now hopefully somebody can do their job, but Reyes is going to pop fly into foul territory, and that will be the game. James Paxton takes home player of the game, eight and two-thirds, ten strikeouts. What a performance from Paxton, probably his best of the year if I had to guess. Torres gets the Yankees two RBIs, and Kron with the only RBI for our team is a solo shot. Godley still pitched all right. Still only a 2.14 ERA for him. The next game, we would win that 8-2. Puig was big in that one. Norris pitched very well. Now, we're going to take a look here at Triple A as we take another look in at the Mud Hens and see what they can do. They are 5-8 and eight right now, so not the best start for the Toledo Mud Hens, taking on one of the better teams in the Louisville Bats. But we're going to take a look in at Matt Manning today. He's had two starts, 1-0 record, 2.45 ERA, and he gets the strikeout there to end the first inning. Beautiful strikeout for Matt Manning, and R.J. Alanis is going to be the pitcher for Louisville. 327 ERA for him. Troy Stokes Jr. on the leadoff solo shot. That thing lined right into the bullpen. And Troy Stokes Jr. gives us the 1-0 lead. His second homer of the season. And you love to see that leadoff power. So now here's Manning. And he gives that one up down the right field line. First baseman can't handle it. And that is going to put runners on the corners to start off the second inning. So a lot of trouble here for Manning. This one is going to be an easy double play. Oh, they he was just safe at first base. That's tough. So now with a 1-1 tie game, a nice little liner into right center field. And wow, going to take two bags. With no outs, so here a little blooper into left field, and that is going to bring the run home. He's coming, and the throw is not going to be in time, so Toledo goes back up to one Matt Manning still dealing. Another strikeout for him, his third of the game so far. And now we go all the way to the bottom of the seventh with Stokes up again, and he takes this down the left field line. That is going to make runners, oh, look at this, he's coming home. He's got the speed, throws not in time, and Toledo up 3-1. Now we move into the eighth inning, and Uriel Gonzalez is going to bomb this thing at the right foul pole, and it stays just fair enough for the bomb. Gonzalez with his third home run of the year, 397 feet. He takes that thing deep, deep in out of here. And he puts Louisville in position 
to maybe tie this game here late in the ball game. So we're going to bring in Drew Carlton. Three games he's pitched in. He has a zero ERA. That's pretty amazing. So 3-2, top eight. Gets the strikeout to end the eighth inning or the top of the eighth inning. Now we go to the bottom. We had a runner in scoring position, but the strikeout there not going to bring it in. So Nick Ramirez comes in to close. He has pitched five games, pitched five innings, zero ERA. He has done an amazing job, but not today as the leadoff batter in the top of the ninth is going to take that thing out of the park. Bell with the solo home run, 382 feet, and the Louisville Bats have tied it. And there he's going to walk in a run. Louisville Bats go up 4-3 to three as Nick Ramirez has blown the game. He gets a strikeout there for the second out of the inning. He's a little pissed. And then we got Chris Oakey. He's going to fly into center field, and that should end the threat there. But Louisville already has taken the lead. Harold Castro's the last hope. And much like in the Tigers game, a foul out is going to end this thing. So the Bats with the win. Very disappointing. Bell and Gonzalez with the home runs for them. Alanis wasn't amazing today, but the bullpen did pretty well for the Bats. Manning did all right. A 2.45 ERA now on the season for him. So we look at that rubber game against the Yankees, and we scored seven runs in the final two innings, but we had given up nine in the first six. So no shot there. Andahar with a home run for the Yankees. Puig and Candelario with home runs for us, and we will lose that game. We look at this Padres series, and we got swept in very poor fashion there. And now we will take our daily look in at the Double A Erie Seawolves. So we'll see what they could do. They're six and ten right now. They're taking on the Binghamton Rumble Ponies on the road. Rumble Ponies are six and nine. They got Luke Rennie on the mound. A 203 ERA. He's been very good so far this season. Cole Peterson going to lead off for the Seawolves, and right away he's going to put one right into the gap. And that is going to be an easy double. He's going to round second, go to third for the triple, and easily get there. As a matter of fact, they threw home, and he probably could have had an inside-the-park home run. But no need, as we would get two batters later. The single into center field to bring him home and have a 1-0 lead. Now, here's another gapper into right center field. This first inning is just a nightmare for Luke Rennie, as that is going to bring home a run as well. Runner will stop at second. So for us, it's Franklin Perez. Big time prospect for us, but he's got a 689 ERA right now in double A. That's not going to get you called up anytime soon. But right there, nice strikeout for him. We go to the top of the second inning for us. And this one going to be a fly ball out to right field. He's coming in from third and easily gunned down at the plate. So not Really smart there, but still in the top of the second with two away now. That's going to gap into right center field. Man, if we didn't have that play at the plate, that was two runs in. But still 3 nothing in our favor. Now Franklin Perez facing some danger, and they get the double play. Beautiful double play to keep the shutout alive. Now here down the left field line, and Erie going to get some more runs in as it is four to nothing now in the top of the seventh inning. Go to the bottom of the seventh. They have a runner on, but a beautiful strikeout. Franklin Perez still up there dealing. There he gets the strikeout on the ball on the high fastball. Gets him to chase. Six strikeouts for Franklin Perez. We go to the bottom of the ninth, and Franklin Perez. Could close this thing, and he will. Complete game, 136 pitches for Franklin Perez as he is able to go all nine, six strikeouts, seven hits, four walks, and a complete game shutout. You love to see it. So RBIs for Schwindel, Jones, some other guys that maybe you would not have expected. Now we will move into something I want to call Pitcher and Player of the Month. 
for our Tigers. I'm going to kind of call out some guys who had good months. Zach Godley, of course, would be our pitcher of the month with that 204 ERA. And then Jake Rogers, I'm going to call out being our hitter of the month. 308 average. Not something I expected from him. So good to see those two players playing well. Taking a look at the standings, you can see the Yankees in the lead of the East. We have fallen into a tie for second place for the division with the Indians. And the Twins have started to take that division. We are one game out of the wild card. Phillies lead the NL East. Pirates for the NL Central. And the Padres for the West. The wild card there also very jumbled up. Three teams going for two spots right there currently. Of course, it is still way too early. Our Mud Hens are four games behind the Louisville Bats as... They are the leaders of our division, and we failed to beat them when we had a chance. The Seawolves, three and a half behind in their league. So, we are now through April, and we will move into May as we also get swept by the Yankees there in this second series with them. Make sure you drop a like on this video, subscribe if you're new to the channel, want to see more MLB content, and we could build a winner together. See y'all.